everyone, this is Rihanna from A Frugal Life, and today we're gonna to be talking about one of the most expensive grocery items to buy, meat. So I'm gonna give you just a few tips and tricks on how to find the best meat deals in your area and how to make your meat stretch for your family so it's not a huge deal in your grocery budget. So number one is gonna be markdowns, and this may seem a little obvious, but it's actually not. So there's a lot of grocery stores that you don't really see markdown meat in, and that's because sometimes markdowns are a secret. So I recommend getting close with your employees in your grocery store. So if you have one local grocery store that you go to a lot, go up to the butcher's counter and just say hi. Ask them if they have any markdown meats. They may tell you that they have some now for you and pull them from the back and let you choose, or they may tell you when they put the markdown meats out. Typically, grocery stores will put them out at a certain day or time, especially uh, if they have certain days that they order new meat. So ask them when those times are and come back to the grocery store at those times to get the best value. I typically get meat on markdown for 30 to 50% all the time at my grocery store. My second tip is going to be a tip that I give a lot and that is to shop at grocery outlet stores. So we do have a grocery outlet store in our area that is actually called grocery outlet but there are grocery stores in other areas that are, are grocery outlets but that are called different things. So look on Google for grocery outlets in your area and you'll start to find discount and mark down grocery stores. You definitely want to check those out for meat. So so I find great meat prices at my grocery outlet stores, and there are some things I only buy at the grocery outlet store. I always buy my ground beef there because it's always $2.99 a pound compared to $5.99 or more a pound in the regular store. They also have specialty meats like lamb and veal for crazy good prices. The third tip is to shop at small grocery stores or ethnic grocery stores in your area. Especially if you live in a big city, there's stores like Ranch 99 Market, which are a Chinese grocery store chain. And then there is um, Mexican Mercado grocery stores in our area. I'm sorry, I know I'm not saying that, um, but these stores are amazing. The quality is so good and the prices on meat are so low. So definitely look around. Don't stick to just Safeway and Albertsons, Kroger's or whatever you have, check out the small grocery stores as well because sometimes they have amazing deals on meat that you can stock up on. The fourth tip is a total secret that you have to know about and that is buying direct from the wholesaler. So nowadays, especially um, in this time when stores are low on meats, there are wholesalers who are selling direct to the public. So there is an app in my area called Cheetah and it may be Cheetah to go but it's something like that and you can download it to your phone and actually order straight from the grocery store to wholesalers at the prices the grocery stores pay. You just have to pay in uh, for bulk cases and then break them down. So I break them down using a food saver. You can also just use regular freezer bags. I think the food saver is a huge money saver, especially if I'm buying like 30 pounds of chicken to break it up into smaller dinner sized portions and vacuum seal it. It's still a huge uh, saver for me, even though you have to buy the bags. So I will put the link down below to my favorite food saver, but you don't have to use that. You can use wax paper or freezer bags. So the fifth tip is a total secret. So you may have to go in on this with a friend, a family member, but that is to buy even bigger in bulk and buy a whole cow or a whole animal. And to do this, you need to buy a half, a quarter, or even a whole steer or lamb or chicken or whatever the farm actually sells, but they will let you do it and they will butcher it for you and sell it to you in freezer packages. All you have to do is call around in your area to the local farms. They will turn you on to the right one, the ones that sell directly to the public. And then you just go in with a friend or family member and buy a huge amount. You will need like a deep freeze for this or a freezer in your garage so you can store the amount or you can check around and there are some butchers in your area will actually rent space in their freezer for you and it's still a great deal if you're buying a whole cow. So you do have to have a little money up front to purchase it, but you end up saving huge in the long run. Six is a super easy one and you don't have to have any money up front to do it. And that's just to eat less meat. So I always recommend at least one meat free meal. You can do potato soup or cheese quesadillas or um, a vegetable casserole, all sorts of things that your family will still love but has no meat in it. So that will cut you down one fifth or one seventh of your grocery budget depending on how many days a week you usually cook. The other thing is to cook meals that have less meat in them. So instead of serving a full serving of meat to each person, take one pound of meat and divide it up into a casserole for the whole family. Or one pound of meat will definitely make a great big pot of soup. So you can definitely reduce the amount of meat you eat to save on your meat grocery bill. My last tip for the day is to substitute in recipes. I do this 
all the time. So don't hold yourself to what the recipe says. If it's a pork casserole, you can definitely substitute chicken. If it's a ground beef casserole, you can substitute ground turkey. If it's a steak recipe, you can even substitute ground hamburger. So play around with the recipes that you get online and on the Facebook group and substitute out them for items that were on sale or are already in your freezer. If you want to try a really great recipe, you do not have to use the same sort of meat that's in the recipe. I sub them out all the time. It works great. If you have any questions or unsure how to cook it, I urge you to go to the Facebook group. It's down below in the links. Ask the question and you will have a hundred different answers on how to cook it properly or things you can can sub out for it so there's no excuse not to cook that great recipe and use the sale meat this is a huge savings tip go ahead and sub out that meat in that recipe so that's it that's all I have for you today please like comment and subscribe and I'll talk to you next time